Hello everyone, I'm Marina and that's a Cramel School. Finally, I'm filming a video I'm sure you've been waiting for. How I do myself a manicure on my right hand. I'm right-handed and it's not easy for me to do a manicure myself with my left hand. It takes a lot of time, but in this video I will show you some tips and details of the process. Let's see what we can do out of this. Subscribe to the channel and let's get into it. Before starting a correction, I put on a glove to protect the skin from dust. It also helps you to see the hand I'm working on better because the camera focuses on it. This is what my nails look like. They are more than one month old and they have experienced a lot. Two mushroom huntings, a cottage construction and a construction adhesive. So they've been through a lot and now they look like this. My middle nail has peeled off and broke but it will be more exciting to work with since I'm going to extend it. To begin with, I need to remove the old coating. I strengthened my nails with a gel polish base. I'm going to use my e-file by Strong with a carbide drill bit. I'm turning the e-file on in the reverse direction, since I'll be working with my left hand on my right hand. I'm using a green cone carbide drill bit. It will easily process all the perimeter of the nail. I'm right-handed and it's so uncomfortable for me to e-file. My left hand is much worse developed than my right hand, so it's difficult for me. I'm making long moves from top to bottom. I'm leaning on with my finger, so the bit does not go too deep into the nail plate. Removing the coating at a maximum speed or close to it. No matter what device you have, always set up the highest speed. First, I'm removing the color coating. Get into the base layer. And now I'll show you one more method how to take off gel polish. I'm turning on the e-file, forward position, putting my finger on the surface and starting to remove the coverage from the cuticle to the free edge. Make sure to avoid touching or damaging the cuticle in this position. I'm removing gel polish in the cuticle area and smoothing the base with the tip of the bit. I often tilt my finger towards it, so that I don't need to move the bit and make the material removal easier. When removing the coating, the beginners may often find that the bit hits a free edge. It happens because you're not holding your finger and the handle well. I'm moving with equal pressure all the way to the tip. If you lift the bit, it will hit the tip and break it. There are not many peelings. And that's a really good result for me, because I always have problems with the coating wearability. It doesn't matter what I use for strengthening, gel, acrylic or acrogel, almost every time there are liftings. And now I have finally found the bases that hold on well. The transverse arch on my thumb is curved, so I'm going to fix this problem as well. Shaping the nails into almonds. I'm using a 180-240 grit file for this. Placing the file under the nail plate to remove the length. Usually I shape clients' nails after the manicure. However, my cuticle is thin and not overgrown, so I can give a shape to my nails at this stage. Now I'm smoothing a transition from the natural nail to an artificial material, removing small peelings and matting the surface, completely removing the free edge on my middle nail, so I can easily set up a paper form. I'm also making a more rounded smile line. I can see peelings on the sides. They often occur because my nails are very flexible, arched and curved. The material can't repeat the shape of the nail band and peels off. In order to minimize this effect, I'm applying a flexible base first and a hard base on top of it, so that a soft base could follow the nail band. I place my thumb on the file and I begin to move my hand in both directions to remove the length. Do you file your nails the same way? If yes, give a thumbs up!
The manicure technique is the same. I'm working at 15 to 17,000 RPM, forward position, moving from right to left. I did not lift the cuticle with an orange stick or a pusher because it is not stuck to the nail plate that much. The bit can easily get under it. The most important thing is to work carefully and to feel the pressure. There should be little of it. And I work mostly on the skin, barely touching the nail. I'm processing my side folds and side sinuses in the same position. I need to pay attention to the right sinus on my middle finger. There is always more skin since we hold the pen while writing. I'm smoothing out dry skin and hangnails above the cuticle in the same position. If you feel that the bit slows down or stops anywhere, it's likely that you are drilling through the nail plate. Make sure that you lean on with your finger and don't press the nail hard. Done with the left side, now I'm switching the rotation direction to reverse. I set the same speed and go from left to right, processing the right sinus. Finished lifting the cuticle and now moving on to the cutting. I like to use Stelex tweezer scissors, but they are made for the right hand. So I use the following trick. I turn my finger away, put the scissors in the left sinus and cut the cuticle this way. There won't be any hangnails, though there is no need to buy scissors for the left-handed. Or you can just use nippers to make the cut. For polishing, I'm using the same diamond flame drill bit. The speed is 15 to 17,000 RPM. Oops! I broke the tip on my index nail while dehydrating. And now I have to repair it too. Here's the result after the manicure. Now proceed with the coating. My nails are thin, so I always apply a dehydrator, which removes any excess moisture from the nail plate. And an acid-free primer. And like the dehydrator, apply it onto the natural nail plate only. This eco base suits me very well. My previous coating was done with this base and it lasted really long. I apply this base in a thin layer to all of my nails at once and cure in the lamp for 30 seconds. Now I will show you how to cut out the paper form if you are a beginner. Usually I peel off the paper form from the substrate and work without it. But in order to prevent the form from sticking to the gloves or to your hands, you can cut a hole and in this position set up the form to your nails. My natural nails grow up, therefore I'm going to place the form a little downwards. And now you can see the gap between the natural nail and the paper form. It means that I need to cut some more in these areas on the sides to make the form set up well. I make a small cut and the hole becomes flatter. Here, a flat gap. I place it to the nail and mark where I need to make cuts because I have big side folds. Cut in the ears to free my side folds from the form. Now I can peel off the substrate and stick the lower ears together exactly one onto the other. Since I have an almond shape, I'm narrowing the form. I place the form and check that the central line continues the central axis of my finger, fixing the back ears and stretching the form, sticking it and pressing. I make sure that the form is set up tightly everywhere. I will use a transparent high viscosity gel for sculpting. I can comfortably work with this material because it doesn't run out. You can also use Acrygel for sculpting. But I personally prefer to use gel on my nails. Grab a small drop and put it on the paper form. I stretch out the lens and I form my almond shape straight away, connecting well in the gross points.
The underlay should be medium in thickness, not too thick or not too thin. Apply the material and now sand into the lamp to cure for one minute. Cure the underlay. And now I'm separating the form. I'm going to repair the other nails. Using the same gel. Fixing the index one. I'm pulling out the gel without touching the nail. Shaping quickly and sand into the lamp so the gel doesn't leak. Filling the material on my ring finger to make a straight parallel. You need to work quickly using this technique. Apply the gel and quickly sand the hand into the lamp. The nail on the ring finger curls badly from the other side, so I'm adding some more material to level the surface. Since the gel polish base will run out, I'm going to make the underlay from sculpting materials. What's more, there is a missing parallel on the stump. I'm grabbing the material and applying it without touching the nail, and cure. After curing the material, file off the shape and all the bumps. Shaping the middle nail's underlay, I need to be really careful, so not to break it. Comparing the middle nail with the rest of the nails in shape and length. Now I'm removing the tacky layer and building the architecture with a transparent medium viscosity gel. Slightly dip the brush into the material. First, I brush the surface of the nail plate a little to moisten it, so the gel could spread on the moistened surface. The gel aligns itself. I grab a large drop and put it on the highest point. Spreading it at the cuticle first. I'm pushing it close and then moving backwards. Removing the excess material. Turning my hand over and spreading the material with a thin brush. If you feel burning, remove your hand from the lamp and put it back when the burning goes away. Cured and now removing the tacky layer. Well, the nail still got wide. I'm going to file it so I don't have to go back to this stage. File the surface a little and dehydrated it. Now I'm going to align the nail plate using a thick hard base from Lia Nail. It's called Liquid Polygel. It's really strong, of gelish consistency. And why do I want to do an alignment with this base instead of a regular gel? It's because of my nails. Hard gel can often crack or peel off on the sides. I was using this base last time. And my manicure lasted perfectly long. So I don't want to risk and change the technology now. Because my nails are specific and this base suits them well. However, it doesn't mean that this base is universal and will fit all the nail plate types. I read the reviews and some girls wrote that this base cracks. And that's why I made the underlay from a liquid and very flexible sticky base, grabbing a drop, placing most of it near the cuticle area. And now I'm dragging a little on the free edge, spreading the material to the sides with a thin brush. Turning my hand over to form the architecture, checking the highlight under the lamp and curing if it's even. I'm aligning with the base, working on one nail at a time, therefore the material doesn't flow. If you do a manicure yourself, you'd better choose a thick consistency. Since my nail is upgrowing, I'm going to put more material near the cuticle area. Put in a drop, lift in the brush and get into the free edge. I place my fingers on the lamp or any other surface for convenience. It may be a vacuum cleaner or a manicure stand. So the nail is closer and I can see all the nuances clearly. But in general, I tend to keep the nails very close to me, almost near my nose, so I can see everything in detail. But it's not that comfortable, actually. Mm -hmm. 
If the highlight is even, then cure in a lamp. Done with the alignment. Now I'm removing the tacky layer and applying color. With a fanned out brush, I carefully paint under the cuticle. While painting, I tilt my finger down, so not to get on the cuticle. And I use a thin brush instead of the original one to paint those bold areas. First, I step back from the cuticle about a millimeter then I paint this area with a thin brush, neatly covering with color in two layers. While smoothing out the material, I place the brush parallel to the nail plate, so there are no gaps. If there are any cuticle leaks, I quickly clean them up with an orange stick or a pusher. I'm going to cover other nails with a shimmery milk camouflage base. Removing the tacky layer and I want to make some stamping on my nails. I'm going to repeat the design with a floral ornament. I really liked it. It looks gorgeous, I think. By the way, you can check a full video about stamping from A to Z on my channel. Subscribe and don't miss new ones. Cover up with a glossy top. But we're not done yet. We need to file the nail plate from the inside, removing all the extra material. You can see a layer in here, so forward position, the speed is about 20,000 rpm, filing the nails from the inside. After that, you can refine the tip with a file. It took me 4 hours to do myself a manicure on one hand and to film this video. That's too long. That's why I don't really like to do myself a manicure but I'm satisfied with the result. And how long does it take you to do yourself a manicure? Write in the comment section below. I wish you all success in your work. Bye-bye!